Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Going to um, cover uh, a modelling situation that cropped up the other day. I've um, had this pop up in the past several times, but I never thought to do a video about it. But uh, say you've got a, a feature like this, which is a boss, and um, half of the boss is a protrusion, the other half is is uh, like a cut within the part. Uh, you can have issues with um, this area. Uh, with putting fillets on because the, the fillets want to terminate down to a point um, which aesthetically isn't always the best so uh, this is this is sort of my resultant part here so I'm going to roll back well, not roll back I'll swap into um, this part here before I put the fillets and this uh, lens on so to start with I've, I've just made some geometry um, plane on 45 degrees um, some walls here with some draft on them, and then knit that together. So I'm going to just split it in half with a trim, so we can start working. So first things to do would be to get the main main fillets on. So I'm going to put a an R1 curvature continuous fillet on. Um, there can be a bit of a trick about which order you put them on, and um, as you've probably found out before in SolidWorks or any other program. Uh, there's a strategy in, in the order of your fillets, so I'm just going to throw them on there and see what As long as we get them all going on, um, we're going to go in here and trim this area out and rebuild it And I'll pick these edges here too because it seems like it was struggling before, there we go, okay so they've all gone on their um, curvature continuous R1 fillet. Um, I mean, you could leave it like that. Turn your lines off. Um, you know, it's not that bad. Um, but say you did want to tidy this area up. Uh, as you can see, these fillets here basically go down to zero. Then there's a few ways to do it. So basic fundamental is that we're going to trim out a section of geometry here and then we're going to create a four-sided boundary surface in there. You can do this with a fill surface as well using the delete and then fill tangent feature um, but I'm going to try and do this with a four-sided surface. So I'm going to put a few splits onto the part. So we're going to split this face here um, I'm just going to make a tangent style spline, so for that you only need a degree 3 style spline. And I'll just make each of the tangent polygon sections, ah uh, sorry, the um, construction polygon sections equal. And tangent at each end. And then insert curve split line, split that base. Um, and I want to split through here, but I want to do it in a tangent fashion. I don't want to kink, so I don't want to kink here. Um, so we can do that with the plane if we pick this point here. And then yeah, no, not that one. I think we'll pick this edge here. I know the angle's a bit more acute down here and up here it's perpendicular, but it'll be alright. Okay, with that plane you go insert curve split line, curves intersection. Okay, and now we repeat the same thing down here. So I'll pick this point because it's furthest away. Have a look what this one looks like. Okay. And again, insert curve, split line, plane, intersection, like that. Okay, and lastly, we're going to split this face here. So I'm going to do what I did, same as what I did in here. I'm going to insert the style spline one, two, three, four CVs. Four CVs means we've got a degree three. Is the air curve. Okay. Um, I'll make these equal. 
and tangent. You can make the um, spline tangent, or you can make use the control polygon section here tangent. Um, sometimes trying to make the spline tangent, and it will throw up a conflict for some reason. Just use the uh, control polygon instead. End up with the same result. Okay, insert curve, split line, projection. Okay, I'm just going to save this. So you can see there's a bit of a patchwork caught there. And one thing, as I said before, you can do the uh, delete face um, trick with a delete and fill, tangent fill. So you basically pick all these faces you want to get rid of and push enter. And hopefully, there you go. It's deleted the whole lot um, and added a tangent fill, tangent on the um, on the boundaries. Um, sometimes these sorts of things can fail though um, further downstream. One good thing about the delete face uh, thing there is you can, um, uh, if this was a solid um, body. If you chop this all out and delete the face, that will turn into a surface body, which means any downstream features uh, that are referencing the solid body will fall over because SolidWorks can't differentiate between solids and surfaces uh, with quite a lot of the features. Uh, if you go changing the body further up from a surface to a solid or vice versa. So uh, if you go delete face like that, for some reason, because it's all packaged up nicely in one feature, um, it doesn't actually turn into a surface body. Okay. So I'm going to go back in here, because I don't want to use a fill, I'm just going to go delete. And we're going to make a boundary surface. So first direction, and we'll need to use selection manager because there's multiple segments on that edge. And then second direction, again, we'll have to use the selection, man selection manager because there's two edges here. But because they're tangent here, hopefully we won't end up with a crease. Looks okay. And then selection selection manager again. Okay, and we're going to tangent 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 and tangent. Um and then we can muck around with the tangent influence. I'll probably do the sides first, see what happens. Okay, um and then second direction. Okay, see what happened there, we're getting this really sharp press through there. So even, just accept this feature. Okay, see what's happening there, so I think what we need to do is throw an additional section through here. So, just roll back. Um, plane on the midpoint of this edge, and then maybe that edge there. And then we'll add a sketch in that plane. I'm going to select these two faces, push S for shortcuts, these sketch ones, and then intersection curve, or alternatively insert, oh no, tools, sketch tools, intersection curve, um, select both those, construction, and we're going to insert another style spline, again it's a busy A, so we're going to put four points in, because we need one, two for tendency on this end, and one, two for tendency on this end. And like the control polygon segments equal, and then tangent and tangent. Hmm. Okay, we here we go. Notice the sketch was blue, that means it wasn't fully defined, it's because the end point wasn't coincident. Okay. So there's our cross section, our additional section. So if we go back into this boundary surface, edit definition, uh, it's the second direction here. And we'll pick that sketch. Okay, um, but okay, and let's have a look, see what. Okay, I can see one thing that's happened already. See how this surface sort of tucks in here. That's to do with our tangent influence. So we want to make that surface fuller. You can see there it's sort of tucking in. 
on the second direction here, we'll go and play with the tangent influence, just make it 100%. Okay, see what's happened there? It's filled out a lot more. So we'll accept that. Okay, that looks alright. I'm going to knit it together. And then mirror. Mirror the body. And then I'm going to knit this together. And because I've got plain R faces and extrudes and stuff, I'm going to turn on merge entities to see if we can get rid of this um, split down the middle. There we go. So there you go. That's um, that's one way to uh, tidy up where you get convex and concave radiuses uh, converging on one point on the edge of a boundary, uh, edge of a surface. Yeah, so again, you probably don't need to worry about that in sort of everyday modelling, but if you want to tidy things up and get rid of those those sort of uh, visible points at the end of these radiuses uh, or fillets, that's one way to do it. Okay, I hope that's useful. Um, if you did find it useful, then please subscribe and I'll keep making these. Thanks a lot. Andrew Jackson. Bye.